in the right conditions, your engine can develop a condition called run-on or dieseling. But what is it, and more importantly, how do you get rid of it? Well, it's a little more complicated than you think, so let's talk about it today. So carbureted engines diesel when they continues to run after the ignition's turned off. And that's generally due to hot spots or carbon buildup. We're gonna talk about all those conditions today so we can kind of figure out what's happening with your engine and so you can decide how to fix it. Generally though, I'll tell you that it's more than one condition. It's usually multiple or several, but it's sometimes a little difficult to figure out exactly why it's occurring and how do you can fix it. But before we get started, I'll tell you just the same as I've said on a lot of other tuning videos, reading your spark plugs is not a bad idea because it'll tell you what the condition is of your timing, if you got too little or too less, and you can look and see the condition of the plugs, meaning whether it's too lean or too rich, and that is a big key factor to determining whether you're, why your engine is dieseling and how you can make it stop. Now I'm not gonna cover these really in order of what's most likely to happen, what's least likely to happen, but generally one of the biggest reasons why an engine diesels is typically the older they get, the more that condition can occur because you've got carbon buildup, uh, soot, garbage that's on the deposits on the uh, valves that has occurred, and generally that's just time and oil deposits and all the other crap that happens with a dirty, nasty, disgusting, you know, old engine that's a little worn out. Now over time, if your engine is running really rich, which we'll talk about here in just a quick minute, but if that's occurring and you are getting those carbon buildups on the, on the pistons, on the combustion chamber, valves, whatever it is, those deposits can get hot enough that any fuel that is continuing to flow into the engine after the ignition is shut off can be enough to spark it. Now, I can't do it here because YouTube got a little upset with me last time I posted that when I, we looked at how fuel ignites where I just poured out a little bit uh, uh, of gasoline on the ground, hit it with a lighter. We all know what's gonna happen with that. That isn't a lot of heat. That's one of the reasons why we talked about timing so much, because if you're not advancing your timing enough, you're not giving that fuel and air mixture that gets into the engine time to burn. So running a little bit hotter timing than what the old Chilton manual said for your 1971 GMC truck is probably not a bad idea. Speaking of which, I still have that on the inside of the fender well here, eight degrees before top dead center. Mm, manual transmission, four degrees before top dead center. At, with today's fuel, that is not enough advance. Carburetor issues are another one. If the carburetor is a little dirty, if it's hanging the float open, if you're continuing to dribble fuel past the, the boosters or through the nozzle from the accelerator pump, sure, any of those ones could leak fuel. So an improperly tuned, adjusted, cleaned, maintained carburetor can absolutely help facilitate that because you need fuel to cause that run on condition. It's gotta have something to burn. It's gotta have something in there, whether it's residual leftover from you know, the condition after you shut the engine off, all those things are coming to play here. It's one of the big reasons why dieseling does occur in a carbureted application is because yeah, the carburetor is just not in that great shape. One of my favorite ones is the, the one that's usually the easiest. And it's one of the questions that I ask is what's your idle speed set to? You know, if you're at you know 1,000 RPM, 1,200 RPM at idle, and I get it, I understand, hotter the camshaft, the more idle you need, uh, you know, the more air that you need going through there just simply because of uh, the way the fuel goes, the way the cam goes, uh, all those things are a big part of it. So if you're running a really high idle, the chances of that uh, <laughs> run on condition are actually pretty high. Here's another one that's a little odd, but it's some things that, I think people just tend to overlook, and we'll do a, another full length video on how to uh, uh, select heat range on spark plugs, but if you have a plug that's too hot, yes, it can maintain its um, you know, temperature well after the engine shut off. So getting the right spark plug for the application is, it's not impossible, but again, like I said, you're, you, when you've got multiple different things that can occur in a situation, you have to look at all the details, and that's one of them. If you have a plug range that's too hot, hmm, it's probably time to look at that. 
Now this one's one that's a little rare, but I have seen it occur before, and that's an ignition condition where you shut the ignition off and the coil and the ignition system still has power. Now when you're a electrical dummy like I am, it's kind of hard to chase that one, but when you shut the key off, if you can have a friend or a buddy pull the power on the coil, if you can do that, obviously on the HEI that's really simple because you just pull that plug out of there. Uh, and uh, pull the power to it, you can confirm that the distributor has no power and potentially you can eliminate that. But I've seen that condition a couple of times. Not, again, not very often. It's not like it happens every single time. But uh, again, another little detail you need to verify before you, uh, you know, start making changes to other things. Fuel pressure. You've heard me talk about this over and over and over again when it comes to carburetors and, you know, getting the right supporting system for it. Fuel pressure for sure is part of the equation. If you have too much pressure and you are pushing fuel through that carburetor and it's not using it and is dumping it through the booster or the nozzle, something like that, pushing it past the shafts, I've seen a lot of different conditions where that occurs. Absolutely too much pressure can be an issue. So if you're in that condition where you've got high pressure or you don't know, having a gauge and a fuel pressure regulator is always a good thing. It's never a bad thing. It gives you, like I said, another adjustment point in the system that just doesn't have that many. And being able to control how much pressure the carburetor is seeing is a really good thing. So if you're experiencing a run-on issue, you may dial the pressure back just a little bit, see if that helps uh, eliminate it. Unfortunately, another really common one today is just crappy fuel. If you got fuel that's old or dirty or filthy or disgusting or horrible, just the way it is right out of the, the pump at the gas station, that can cause it. If you're running too low of an octane, if you're running 87 octane where the engine needs a, a 90 or a 91, I run 91 in the GMC because that cam profile is a little bit hotter, compression's a little bit hotter, and it needs that little bit more octane to make a good clean burn. If you're running the 87 because you're cheap or you just got into a situation where you couldn't, you know, not run it, it was the only thing that was available for whatever reason at the gas station, then that can be a causing factor of why your engine is running on. Now, how do you solve this? This is going to be the one and the only video where I will recommend seafoam. I have used that before by dumping a little bit into the tank and actually dumping some directly down the carburetor as the engine is running and it will help clear it up. Now, there's a pretty easy process with it. You know, engine running, just trickle a little bit down there. You don't want to flood it and stall the engine out. Uh, you're just trying to add a little bit down into that chamber. Uh, do that for a few minutes. Try to, you know, put a quarter or half the can in, whatever it is that uh, uh, I don't even know what Seafoam comes in. I very rarely use it. I'm not a big fan of that product. But in this instance, it works pretty well. So half a can, whatever that is, a 12-ounce can, shut it off let it sit for a while, fire it back up. You're going to get a lot of white smoke and crap that'll pour out of the back of the, you know, through the exhaust pipe, but uh, it's not a bad way of doing it. And again, a little bit more in the tank and it does help loosen up some of those deposits. It's again, if you're having that situation and you're trying all these things and nothing's working or nothing is getting eliminated completely, it, trying to eliminate some of those deposits in the engine isn't a, isn't a bad idea. And unfortunately, with that situation, if you do have a ton of deposits in there, because like we mentioned early on, it's just a really old engine and it's not uh, not in the greatest condition, there's not a heck of a lot you can do about it. Sometimes that condition is so bad or the, you know, the buildup is so bad, but, you know, in the valve, behind the valve, in the chamber, on the piston, you're not going to be able to do that unless you do a full tear down and clean and, and rebuild. So it, it's just part of it. If you've got a really, really high mile engine, uh, the engine that was in the GMC, you'll see a video here of it. Uh, I don't know what, uh, um, how many miles it had on, but when we tore that doggone thing down, it was a disaster on the inside. Uh, so I don't know that it was experiencing a dieseling problem, but, uh, it certainly wasn't running well. So it's, it was completely possible that that condition could have existed. 
Last one here to consider is the PCV system. Now, I know another one that, that people are going to get kind of irritated by, and I get I've asked many times why I run a PCV valve on this truck. Well, the reason being is because I don't want that crankcase to be ever experience high pressure and not being able to evacuate it out or pushing gaskets uh, out to relieve itself uh, from any of those pressures. But a PCV is very good for the engine internally, crankcase wise, because it is taking care of and burning some of the water vapor, some of the other things that are occurring inside the engine. It's not a bad thing to have in there. So again, on the Chevelle, on a much bigger horsepower application, uh, PCV is not even gonna be in the equation. On this application with this truck, absolutely. I'm, uh, I have no issue running it. Uh, it's a good thing to have. Yes, it's kind of technically an emissions deal, but what it's doing is it's helping get rid of the crap out of the crankcase, but you're going to pay for that a little bit and potentially have some garbage that goes into that carburetor and helps facilitate that buildup uh, within the engine. So it's just something to be conscious of and a decision you're gonna have to make. Do you wanna run one or not? Well, now that we're getting into the hotter months of the year, this condition is gonna <laughs> rear its ugly head just a little bit more. Uh, again, it just happens, tends to happen a lot more in the in the summer months because just engines run, I think, a little bit hotter. The ambient air coming in is a little warmer and obviously you're gonna have a, a better uh, situation for those conditions to occur. So I apologize for the wind today if, uh, if it was, uh, uh, distorted the video at all. Uh, we're kind of uh, dancing between rain and tornadoes here in the Mid-South, so uh, we've had that for a week or so. Hopefully uh, that goes away here pretty quickly. If you got any questions on your engine and something that's occurring with it with a dieseling or run-on problem, leave them down below. I'll try to help you answer it. Uh, lots of folks are, are now tuning into this channel, which is kind of cool. Uh, so a lot of folks down there will kind of walk you through, maybe give you some things that they've done to try to help. Uh, so it's kind of a cool thing about YouTube. I love that about that community where, uh, you know, folks help other folks. It's kind of a cool deal. So leave your comments down below. Gosh, if I, if I don't say this, I guess I'm not a professional YouTuber, but please like, comment, subscribe. I guess that's the way it's supposed to go. I don't know. Maybe I got it out of order. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk to you guys on the next one. We'll see you.